Hello and welcome back to One Hit Wonderland, where we take a look at bands and artists known for only one song. And today we're taking a look back to the vat of toxic gunk that was early 2000s rap metal. Take my advice, you don't wanna step into a big polish. Now, new metal was, by any measurement, an ugly genre. It intentionally sounded ugly, and its practitioners were also ugly, and they sang and rapped about ugly things. And that's why, even though it dominated the cultural landscape in a way that rock music really hasn't since, new metal tended not to have very much play on the pop charts. The pop audience did not have any time to spend with these grody, pierced metal guys. There are, of course, exceptions. Come, my lady, come, come, my lady, you're my butterfly. Sugar, baby. baby. Come, my lady, you're my pretty baby, you'll make your legs shake, you make me go crazy. This, as every single one of you definitely already knows, is Butterfly by Crazy Town. And while I have bent the rules for this show in the past, let it be known that today I am covering a band with indisputably one hit and no more. Even fans of this song had to know that this had fluke written all over it. They were these tattooed rap metal guys rapping about how much they loved you, girl. Like, most new metal guys were angry at girls if they ever even mentioned them. And here are these guys trying to be romantic. They were the boy bandification of new metal. Hey, sugar mama, come and dance with me. So it's no wonder that they couldn't sustain a career. Even for a genre as instantly mockable as new metal, Butterfly destroyed its band's cred nearly instantly. If you make a Crazy Town station on Spotify, you get a lot of Smash Mouth and not a lot of Disturbed, which is not a good sign. I even remember a Jack Black movie that used this song as a symbol of everything vapid and worthless in the world. And that movie only came out like a year or two later. That's how instantly dated and lame they were. I mean, the name of the song was Butterfly. Butterfly. Butterflies in the eyes and the looks to kill. Mariah Carey named songs Butterfly. And for the love of God, the name of the band was Crazy Town. Yeah, come at me, bro. Just try it, because I'm about ready to take you to Crazy Town. But were they so bad, really? I, well, I mean, they had to have been, right? Surely a band like this couldn't be worth a second listen. Could they? No, they couldn't. But it could get us a few cheap laughs, so let's check it out. Life is precious, so I guess it's true. But to tell the truth, I really never knew till I met you. The core of Crazy Town is their two front men. Brent Mazur, aka Epic, and Seth Binzer, aka Shifty Shellshock. It's not the name of an 80s action figure cartoon, that's literally what he called himself. Shifty Shellshock. Anyway, Epic and Shifty started a rap duo in the mid-90s called the Brimstone Sluggers, and they've always maintained that they are a hip-hop act first and foremost. Epic was even a DJ for House of Pain for a brief period. After the Brimstone Sluggers, they eventually formed a band, and their drummer, an actual black person in rap metal, believe it or not, played with the Beastie Boys for a little bit. And they also got themselves a turntable as DJ AM. Uh, holy shit, DJ AM, really? I know that name. I. I don't know much about DJs, but yeah, I knew that guy. Like, he was a, he was a big deal until he OD'd and died a few years back. Speaking of overdoses, drugs are going to be a major theme in this review. That first project didn't take off because the two frontmen had to go do simultaneous stints in rehab. Anyway, they released their first album, The Gift of Game, in 1999, while they were on tour with the Red Hot Chili Peppers. At this point, you may notice that they have direct links to three great acts that are also basically the progenitors of rap metal. You'd think it would have helped, but it really didn't. Also, much like the last band I covered on this show, The Vapors, Crazy Town realized early on that they had an obvious hit on their hands, they just refused to release it in the desperate and ultimately doomed hopes of staving off one-hit wonderdom. Let's see what they release instead! I can feel it. gonna say it. This reminds me way too much of Vanilla Ice's metal version of Ice Ice Baby. Yeah, they're toxic. Like a chemical spin. You know, one thing this does make me realize is that I always kind of subconsciously associated Crazy Town with new metal acts like Papa Roach or Limp Bizkit, but maybe I'm kind of wrong here. I mean, it's partially there, but this is also definitely rooted in a sort of 
different late 90s genre, the kind of dark SoCal skate punk metal scene. I would definitely have to call Crazy Town the poor man's 311. And I hate 311. So fuck the critics, we leave them hanging like an Oh, dude, not cool. Too soon. Well, I mean, it was too soon at the time. The, the guy from In Excess had pretty recently hanged himself. But yeah, too soon. Okay, well, this song didn't take off. Let's try another. To be fair, I actually can imagine this song being a hit, but again, I don't really like this genre, so my opinion's not worth much. Overshadowed by similar things that are even dumber but more popular? Yeah, that sounds about right. With two flop singles, things were not looking good. Also, Shifty had a relapse and threw a chair through a window and got the band booted from Ozfest. At this point, they were running out of options, so they said, you know, goddamn it, just released the pop single, let's see what happens. Okay, I've listened to the entire Crazy Town discography now, and Butterfly is by far the best that this band has ever sounded. Which makes perfect and total sense, seeing as that's not actually Crazy Town. That's a loop from a tiny sample from an instrumental song by the Chili Peppers. And it sounds great, because even two seconds of John Fushante is better than any amount of new metal sludge. And what did they do with it? They made a goddamn love song. Come, my lady, come, come, my lady, you're my butterfly. Sugar, Crazy Town were hardly the first hard rock band to discover they could get pop success with a love ballad. They were just the only ones who came from new metal. I mean, it's such a hair metal move. But with new metal, the dynamic was so different. Love songs were where hair bands brought it down a notch, dim the lights. Whereas Butterfly is one of the happiest, most upbeat new metal songs in existence. You know, come, my lady, come, come, my lady. You make me go crazy. Spin Magazine called it the sappiest hip-hop song since LL Cool J's I Need Love. And apparently K-Rock in LA made fun of them constantly for their repeated use of the word lady, which they thought was a little too Lionel Richie, I guess. Honestly, I'm fine with that. What gets me is all the bad boy macho posture it came with. I'm a badass in love, girl. Now, this is a highly lame song. Again, it's called Butterfly. But even though it's easy to make fun of, I'm not sure I could say I dislike it. Matter of fact, honestly, I, th I think I like it quite a bit. Like, even as doofusy as it is. Like, somehow the worse it gets, the more charming it is, even though the lines are just utterly cringeworthy. Hey, sugar mama, come and dance with me. The smartest thing you ever did was take a chance with me. Whatever took you fancy, girls, me and you like Sid and Nancy, so... <sighs> that lyric got so much shit back in the day. Yeah, if you don't know, Sid Vicious was the spectacularly untalented replacement bass player for the Sex Pistols. Nancy was his addict sponge of a girlfriend, and Sid probably murdered her in a drug-induced stupor shortly before ODing. So, yeah, most people wouldn't find that romantic. Like, why couldn't they have picked a more traditional symbol of love? Like, Romeo and Juliet! <laughs> yeah, I'm actually fine with the Sid and Nancy reference. I saw the movie, it's one of the most romantic movies ever made if you ask me. I totally buy that they were the punk rock version of True Love. Quite honestly, I'm much more bothered by Tickles Your Fancy. Whatever tickles your fancy, girls. Whatever tickles your fancy, my dearest. Who talks like that? But yeah, I'm a, I'm a sucker for a pretty guitar line and a good hook. Say what you want about Butterfly, it's unique. We've never had another song that sounded like this. As embarrassing as it is, I give this song a thumbs up, if for simple novelty, if nothing else. But while Crazy Town were undoubtedly happy to finally be catching on, how in the world could they build on it? Okay, so you're a metal band who just had their first hit with a sappy love song that's totally not characteristic of your sound. How do you edge back into your normal mode without alienating your new fan base? Well, as you can tell by the title of the segment, you don't. But I think Crazy Town actually gave it a fair shot. Now ladies come, ladies go on my revolving door. Some ladies never come back, most come back for more. I got a house in the hills with a dough that spins. Goes in and out, out and in, round and round. And I live a life.
if any song could have transitioned them from their first hit to sustained success, it was probably this one, Revolving Door. Like, you go from being romantic with a girl to bragging about girls, and then maybe you move back into the hardcore stuff again. And while they don't have the Chili Pepper sample anymore, they do have a guitar intro that sounds like the riff to Under the Bridge played backwards. It's like the replacement for Sublime we all wanted and never got. So, why didn't this hit big? Oh, right. Crazy Town sucks. Okay, but that was the first album. After that taste of success, they knew exactly who they were and what they wanted to do. And they were going to bring it to the masses. Yes, sir. 2001 would be the year that the music world was dominated by a heavily tattooed new metal band from California with a DJ and two vocalists. Everything you say to me. Yeah, as you may recall, Linkin Park's debut album, Hybrid Theory, went like 300 times platinum that year, and Crazy Town definitely noticed. Like I said, they knew who they wanted to be. Them. It's a glass pipe, get the flashlight, now break it. People say I'm a star, but I still think I'll never and make I'm it. Just another prayer, not a second left. This song is called Drowning. Yeah, Drowning. I'm surprised they didn't go whole hog and make the chorus go, Drowning in my flesh, these cuts don't appear to be mending. I've listened to their second album, and it's so much angstier than their debut, and also so much worse. And naturally, it tanked, I have to imagine, because A, they just weren't good enough writers to tap into Linkin Park's level of angst and pain, and two, their big hit was still Butterfly. No one was surprised when Crazy Town broke up a year later. How can you go back to being a serious metal band after releasing something called Butterfly? I didn't burn down the school, it was the butterfly, I tell you. The butterfly! <laughs> no. Yes. Drugs. Lots and lots of drugs. Actually, you may remember Shifty Shellshock from his appearance on that Paul Oakenfold song from that Diet Coke commercial. Now this was actually a minor hit, unlike all of Crazy Town's other singles. Probably because it's all, you know, happiness and California sunshine. If you ask me, Crazy Town's biggest error is that they didn't embrace their new pop side. Like, Sugar Ray was a similarly terrible metal band, and they got a flute pop hit, remade themselves in that image, and became hugely successful staples of beach parties and Christian youth group hangouts. I don't usually advocate selling out and trying to recycle past successes, but in Crazy Town's case, it was probably worth a shot. After that, you probably don't know anything about them, unless you saw Shifty on Celebrity Rehab, Celebrity Rehab 2, Sober House, and my favorite VH1 reality show, Possibly Drug Induced Coma. Yeah, this seemed like a pretty doomed band for a while, but apparently in the last couple of years, Shifty has been on the road to recovery, and him and Epic got back together, and Crazy Town actually reunited just a short time ago. They even released their long-delayed third album in August. They sound like they're in a better place now. Drop the ceiling, pop a pillin' to stop this feeling. I swear to God, I almost pulled a Robin Williams. Oh, screw you! What the hell is wrong with you? Why do you keep desecrating the graves of recently deceased beloved celebrities? Oh, boo! No. Unfortunately, exploring further Crazy Town records revealed exactly what I expected it to. A really lousy metal band who had one hit that sounded absolutely nothing like anything else they ever released. Yeah, Butterfly is one of those bad songs I can totally get behind. Considering what happened to Crazy Town, it's not surprising that no other band ever tried to repeat their success. But I wish they had. Can, can you honestly say we didn't need more of this? More than we need more P.O.D.? Yeah, so that's, that's my verdict. Crazy Town was mostly bad, but Butterfly is still awesomely bad. Come, my lady. Come, come. Come, my lady, come, come, my lady, you're my butterfly, my sugar, baby.